Hello friends, in today's video I'll take you on a journey. I've shown you this apron in another video, now it's time to show how it was made. If you've spent any time on Pinterest, you've seen these pictures floating around. The same apron design is popular in other corners of the internet too. There are many beautiful apron designs from the Victorian and especially the Edwardian era, but after having seen this for so long, this is what I wanted to make. I did the bare minimum of Pinterest research to see if this is in fact a historically accurate design. And besides period dramas and films, I found this picture. So it seems to me that it did exist, but perhaps weren't that common. And that, similarly to me, people inspire each other and everyone has fallen in love with the same design. Nonetheless, it looks simple and practical, and I've prepared this unbleached linen. After ironing, I lay my fabric double and mark what looks like 65 centimeters. This will be the skirt of the apron. I check that I'm happy with the length before cutting it out. The fabric is unfolded and I measure out 50 times 26 centimeters. That will be the apron bib. To make the yoke, I used my trusty shirt pattern as a guide. This one has the shoulder seams placed further towards the back. I wanted it to be about as long as my finger, which turned out to be 7 centimeters. Here I'm disregarding my markings and shifting everything slightly because I didn't want to waste any fabric. This wouldn't have happened if I made a paper pattern, but uh, oh well. I barely remember to add seam allowances, but I did remember. That's not big enough for my head. Hey, that piece looks pocket shaped. This is then copied to make the other side. Then I attempted to make the straps. I measured that I needed them to be approximately 45 centimeters. My idea was to draw out to 45 by 17 centimeters so I could fold them. I drew a line for this. I made sure it was the same width. And then I instantly forgot and cut my single lonely piece in half. Then I measured out my waistband, this will be cut as two separate pieces, so maybe this is what had me confused. Waistbands in general confuse me. There's always something I forget, so they're usually wrong somehow. Well here I need my waist measurement, plus seam allowances, plus the overlapping piece in the back. This piece was 7cm because I wanted it to be adjustable. I made my waistband 3cm wide. Thank you. 
and here are all the pieces laid out. I then fold the short ends of my bib over twice. I'm using my simometer to make it look like I'm doing this properly, but it's faster and looked a lot nicer when I eyed it. Then I repeated the same for three of the sides on the skirt piece. And at this moment, as so many similar moments, I declared linen my favourite material. It's so easy to shape, it's almost as if it wants to be sewn. These were stitched down with a sloppy running stitch in a natural coloured cotton twist. The big visible stitches is all part of the look I'm going for and I thought it looked better than invisible stitches. And as an added bonus, it was a fast make. This entire apron was made in just about 12 hours. Then the seam allowances on the yoke was pressed inwards. Finally, they've come to their senses and are using a sewing machine. Well, sorta. Here past me, sewing double rows of gathering stitches into the open ends of the bib and skirt. The bib is gathered down to 20 centimeters. Then I make a bib yolk sandwich. It, <laughs> English is such a weird language and I know I'm not doing it right, but it makes it more fun. The yoke pieces are sewn together with running stitches, but on the sandwich part I use back stitches to strengthen it. Here past me is preparing the straps. And it was at this moment they realized. So then they instead made the most narrow fold, in the hopes of it being wide enough. On the waistband I simply iron in the seam allowances.
On the straps, past me decided to fell one side down with whip stitches and the other side with rending stitches. Just to spice things up a bit, I assume. The seam allowances on the yoke is folded in. But what a surprise, the pieces don't fit no more! I ended up ripping open the seam and fitted the yoke to the size of the straps. The pieces are then attached with back stitches. Then I had some fun picking out the gathering stitches. The bottom part of the bib is gathered down to the same size as the top. I mark where to sew it to the waistband, wrongly. The way I choose to do the closure offsets the middle. Luckily I realised before I started sewing. Both sides of the waistband is stitched on at the same time and once again using back stitches. Then I gathered up the skirt and I used my mannequin to help me divide it in the places that needed fullness. This is a square skirt, thus giving it a so-called cupcake shape, not necessarily my favourite shape, but the skirts are easy and fun to make. It is sandwiched into the waistband and secured with the amazing backstitch. But at this point it got too dark to film in the cabin, so I had to finish it the next day. On which the straps are becoming part of the sandwich. Using my mannequin to pin them in place before trying it on myself, I find that I made them too long, so I'm trimming away the axis. This was painful. Then the pocket-shaped scraps were tested out. But I have this strange thing about what we call outside sewn pockets, so I noped out of this one. But there is nothing wrong with those pockets, I just think I've seen too many birder patterns and have become intolerant. Then I also have this weird thing about sad scraps, there must be a use for them, right? So I added the strap scraps on the back of the shoulder to protect and strengthen the seam. They were attached with whip stitches and the remaining waistband was closed with running stitches. Then the pocket scraps were sewn together with a narrow blanket stitch, and this took so long. I spent less time on the skirt than on this thing. The opening was rolled down twice, and I sewed it to the inside of the waistband, securing it with both running stitches and whip stitches. A secret little pocket, that is so secret I forgot to film it. Then past me is finishing up adding a hook to the short end of the closure and then making a row of thread loops. These look pretty, but I will most likely replace them with bars at one point because they get stuck and tear too easily. Isn't it cool how top stitching everything together makes it difficult to see what's the inside and outside of a garment? All of this was done on the wrong side and had to be redone. 
I like how this apron ended up. I made it specifically for this actress, but I'm probably going to wear this whenever I can. But if I were to make it again, I would probably make a skirt with more width. But why don't you decide? Thank you for following along, and good luck with your own projects. Until next time.